Hi, welcome to another video. So, I've been creating apps multiple times. But the last time I created an app, it took a lot of time because, if you remember, I had made an app in my previous video, a story generator app, which allowed us to generate stories and then convert them to audio versions. Now, due to this, we had to give Gemini many prompts and API examples to help implement the API we needed. Plus, if we want to change the API or functionality even a little bit later, it becomes a bigger hassle. However, I think we should be able to do this more easily if we use Vector Shift. With it, we can create automated workflow pipelines and get one API where we input data and get an audio output, solving those issues for us. Then, we can just prompt Klein to implement one API. Plus, I'll also be able to change the workflow later on if I want, without touching any code. It even has a free tier, so we can do it all for free. And it comes with $1 worth of free credits for LLM usage, which should be enough for testing. So, I thought this would be a good video to show you how to make apps easily with AI while keeping the workflow or backend of your app flexible and customizable. This is particularly useful if your app's workflow heavily relies on APIs. Anyway, we'll dive into that soon. First, we need to figure out what we'll use as the coding agent, as well as the LLM, and what we'll be creating, and which framework we'll be using. For the coding agent, we can either use Ader or Klein. I prefer Klein because it requires much less effort to generate stuff than Ader. For the LLM, I'll be using Grok2. It was recently launched as an API. It used to be available only on the X platform, but now it's available as an API too. So, I thought it would be fun to test it out while we're doing this, and it'll make the video a bit more exciting compared to the previous ones. So, that's cool. Now, for the framework. I'll be using Expo this time, because I'm most comfortable with it. Next, we need to figure out what we'll create. I want to build something that would be super cool, at least for my use. I want to create a simple mobile app where I can write down topics for an AI assistant throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, it can generate an audio overview that explains all those topics to me. I think it'll be super useful and something I'll actually use this will also require multiple APIs, so we'll be able to test Vector Shift too. All right, let's get started. Grok2 is available on Open Router, so you can get the API key from there. Once you have that, just go to Klein, select Open Router in the settings, and choose Grok2, then configure it. Now, since we'll be building an Expo app, I created it by running the Create Expo App command. I've also run it here, and you can see the basic app, which looks fine. First, let's create the basic UI for our app. Then we'll move on to the vector shift setup and configure the API. What I want is simple. I won't be adding authentication or anything like that because it's just a super basic app to test building with Grok. I'll ask it to modify the home screen so users can add tasks which will be stored in local storage, and they can edit or delete them too. I also want a small circular button in the bottom, right with a mic or audio icon, which I'll later link to the API. I sent the prompt, and it's generating now. Okay, it's done. Looking at it, you can see this is what it looks like. We'll need to tweak it a bit because the add function isn't working. I sent a few more prompts, and it fixed that too, and now it works. After that, 
I asked it to remove the bottom menu bar and improve the design a bit, which it handled well. In total, I gave it about three, four more prompts, and it managed everything. So, I think Grok 2 is decent for coding, although it's currently rate limited, even if you pay. The results aren't amazing, but they're fine. It's similar to Llama 3.1405B. It can do things, but not always perfectly. Still, for coding, there are cheaper alternatives I'd recommend over Grok 2. Anyway, our app is looking good so far. Now, we need to configure vector shift and give Klein the API schema to implement. First, let's head to vector shift. Once you're signed in, you'll see various options. You can create chatbots, automations, and other things, all built on pipelines, which is what we want to use. So, let's go to pipelines. Here, we'll create a pipeline. You can choose from multiple templates or start from scratch. I prefer starting from scratch. Once the pipeline is created, you'll see this interface. Now, we need to drag and connect some elements. First, we'll add an LLM. Go to the LLM tab and you'll see several options. I'll use perplexity because I want the LLM to be able to do research on topics that may not be in its training data. We could implement a search API with a basic model, which you can also do here. But I'll stick with perplexity. Now that we've added the LLM, you'll see three points we need to connect. We need to connect a system prompt and an actual prompt. Since I won't be changing the system prompt dynamically, I'll go to the General tab, grab a text object, and write a static system prompt. Then, I'll connect this text to the system prompt point. Next, we'll connect a dynamic input to the actual prompt. For that, we'll drag an input object and connect it to the prompt point. This input can come from an API or be provided directly. Once the output is generated, we need to convert it to speech. We can use 11 labs or OpenAI text-to-speech here. I'll use OpenAI. So, let's connect the output to text-to-speech. Now, we just need to add an output, since the final output will be in audio format. Let's select that. And we're done. Now, we have a pipeline. Input goes to perplexity, which generates a response, then sends it to OpenAI text-to-speech, which outputs the audio. Let's deploy these changes. You can test it here by running a simple prompt. After waiting a bit, it works. Meta AI has recently released Llama 3.2, a collection of large language models designed to enhance AI capabilities across various applications. We have the audio. If we go back to the pipelines page and select this one, you'll see the API option. We'll copy this API and give it to Klein, asking it to implement it. It's doing that now, and it's done. It wasn't working initially and gave some errors, so I sent a few more prompts with the errors, and it fixed them. Here's the final app. You can add topics you want to learn about. Let's try Llama 3.2 Liquid Foundation Models and Data Science. Two of these are new topics. Now, hit the sound icon, wait a bit, and it generates the audio for you. We're diving into three exciting topics. Llama 3.2, Liquid Foundation, LFM models, and new advancements in data science. 1. Llama 3.2, revolutionizing AI with vision and multimodality. This AI marvel includes vision models with 11 billion and 90 billion parameters. But that's not all. Llama 3.2 also boasts lightweight text-only models with 1 billion and 3 billion parameters. 2. Liquid Foundation, LFM models, the future of personalized AI. Although not a primary focus of the provided sources, LFM models are part of a broader trend in AI to create more personalized and adaptive systems. These models are designed to learn and adapt based on individual user behavior, much like how our brains adjust to new information. 3. New advancements in data science, fine-tuning for specific tasks. One of the most exciting developments 
is the ability to fine-tune large language models like Llama 3.2 for specific tasks. This process involves... The audio is also saved on the device, so you can play it later if you want. I can also implement a database to store file paths. I'll do that later. This works really well. I think I can turn this into a full personal assistant. In the vector shift pipeline, I can add Google Calendar integration, Notion integration, and more. I could make it an assistant that generates audio overviews of the day and similar things. Let me know if you want a video where I create a full personal AI assistant. So that's the app. I'll definitely be using it and I can tweak it further without messing with the code since the back end is fully graphical. That's really cool. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.